Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a blue, black and red or Grixis colored artifact sacrifice deck. And this archetype got a few new upgrades in the recent expansion, including four copies of a Gleaming Gear Drake. A two mana 1-1 one, one flyer makes a clue token when it enters a battlefield. And whenever we sacrifice any artifact, we can put a plus one plus one counter on the Drake. So it grows from sacking clue tokens to draw a card, as well as our various blood tokens that we get from Epicure and Harvester. These remain a staple of the sacrifice archetype as harvester can also remove opposing creatures if we have enough blood tokens in play and then besides blood tokens we also have map tokens which let us explore if we sacrifice them for one mana from a spyglass siren as well as fanatical offering two mana instant needs to sacrifice an artifact or creature as an additional cost and then we get to draw two cards and to make a map token so that's another nice instant speed play to maybe sack some creature that's about to die after chum blocking and can also enable the drake at instant speed and then Oni Cult Anvil also remains an important piece of the puzzle as a free sacrifice outlet that can slowly drain the opponent while making an army of construct tokens on the ground. And Anvil is also the best enabler for the detective's satchel. We're only playing three copies since it is kind of expensive at four mana, but it provides a lot of value, letting us investigate twice when it enters. And then we can tap it to make a 1-1 flying thopter token, but only if we've sacrificed an artifact this turn. And of course it's not too difficult to enable in this deck, but often we'll require at least one mana to sack a map token or a blood token so it's much better if we already have an anvil in play so we can sacrifice an artifact for free and then on turn four immediately make a first thopter token with satchel and then of course the more copies we have in play the better can eventually start sacking clue tokens to draw as well and then we've got a bit of removal as well for copies of Voltage Surge to deal 2 damage. And if we sacrifice an artifact, 4 damage. And then Annihilating Glare can destroy a creature or Planeswalker. But as an additional cost, we have to sack a creature artifact. But we can also pay 4 extra mana. So often going to opt to just sacrifice something instead since we have so many tokens laying around. And then I'm also still playing four copies of the Experimental Synthesizer, has a nice source of card advantage and another artifact we can sacrifice. This will exile the top card instead of drawing, so it does get around Shieldred's ability, which is nice. And even though it's a one drop, we typically don't want to play it on turn one, since we'll get much more value if we wait at least until turn three to cast it before playing a land for the turn. So that way, if we exile a land, we can still play it. And if we exile a two drop, we can often still cast that as well. So that's part of the reason why I'm keeping the curve of the deck so low and we mostly have one and two mana cards with the exception of the new detective's satchel. Now there's definitely a few other cards you could include. We could lean more heavily into the pirate theme, include breaches. There's the freebooter at one mana that also plays well with fanatical offering as something to sacrifice and make a treasure token. And at that point we could also play the two mana pirate that finds more pirates and artifacts. But then we're kind of leaning more into the pirate theme and less into the artifact sacrifice theme. But it's possible that kind of a mix of the two decks could work as well. And then a mana base has two copies of Xander's Lounge. It is a tap land, which is not ideal in this deck where we want to curve out for the most part, but it is still good mana fixing. And then we've got eight fast lands with Blackleaf Cliffs and Dark Slick Shores. We do need some pain lands to complement the mana base. So these are not ideal when facing aggro decks, of course. Four copies of Sheevan Reef, two Sulphur Springs, and then a two Storm Carved Coast, since we don't really need blue mana until turn three usually. And then we've got a few basics to search up. And then a two channel lands, I excluded the black channel land since we don't have any super exciting creatures to return from the graveyard anyways, and sometimes it's nice to have a few more basics. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, and uh, we're off to a little bit of a slow start with double Xander's Lounge, but at least we'll have perfect mana. And then with at least one removal spell, hopefully we don't get a run over. Anvil also very nice alongside Gear Drake, especially. Alright, the band could take Voltage Surge, and then we're out of removal. Takes Anvil instead, and we top deck another one. So I could keep up Surge in case they play turn 3 Gix. I think I need to maybe keep Surge for Gix itself. So I'll play the Epicure. Ideally we draw land next turn, so we can go 2 drop plus 1 drop. Could also try Synthesizer to exile a land, hopefully. I 
All right, opponent does nothing with three mana. And we draw another anvil. So if I don't exile the lands with Synthesizer, I'll be pretty sad, but I think it's worth a shot. And yep, that's a brick. So now probably have to sack the blood token to try again. And Apicure can go. Alright, got there. So next turn we can maybe double spell. Shield on four. Surge is not quite enough here. So do we take out the bat instead? Yeah, I guess that's reasonable. Get our anvil back. And hope to get some multiple anvils going. So I'll play one sack synthesizer, hope to exile a land so I can play something else. All right, get to play Gear Drake. Cut down our Gear Drake. Think I have to jump Shield Root since the damage is adding up pretty quickly. And the Liliana. A fight? And you Gonna start by minusing. Oh, I've always hated clouds. Satchel isn't bad here. Or we can double anvil. And then next turn deploy Satchel. Yeah, the upside of a flying creature right now isn't huge. Can maybe pressure Liliana a bit better. I think I'd rather just get the volume of tokens. And then we can discard Harvester. Now I can chum shield it while sacking a token to Anvil. You won't be outsmarting me. All right, can uh, Anvil in response so the adventure fizzles and they don't get the enchantment. So now if they attack, I could just take it to attack Liliana. They might actually decline to attack if they don't have a blocker second main. All right, opponent is attacking. I'll take it. And then channeling Abandoned Mire. To get back another Liliana, I guess, or a Deep Cavern Bat. Goes for Liliana. Take our turn. Another Satchel. Yeah, they might make me discard. I mean, what's the alternative? If I don't attack Liliana, then if they plus, they might discard the other one. I think I would still prefer them spending the mana. Could use Satchel in the opponent's turn in case they top deck a sweeper, but maybe they stop attacking and then I don't want to sacrifice anything. So play Liliana. Are we going to start plussing? Minus two, alright, perfect. So 
we get to keep our satchel. And yeah, at this point I think we've sort of stabilized. Now I'll jump and sack. There are still cards that can beat us. Gix's command comes to mind. But as long as we can keep gaining life with Anvil, we can offset Shieldred's ability. I do want to enable Anvil now. And I think I'll wait to use Satchel until the opponent's turn. And then uh, probably sack something to the Anvil anyway. Just to play around uh, Gix's command, for instance. Evolve Sleeper could be a problem. And Gix. That not so much. So if they eventually level up Sleeper, they can start drawing cards and offset it with Shieldred. For now, I could actually trade for Shieldred if we Anvil make two Thopters, yeah. Why not? And then I might want to keep the Clue token, although I probably don't need both. So trade for Shieldred. Get to untap. And uh, probably start to deploy the rest of our hand before drawing with a clue token. Can maybe explore with a map to enable everything. And that's enough for a concession. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and we've got what looks like a keeper. A little bit painful with three pain lines. So I'll start with a lounge to mitigate the damage a little bit, as opposed to going reef into sulfur springs. Alright, put in maybe a life gain deck. Yeah, I can still play Harvester before playing Siren, even though Siren could trade for the bait. Could go Siren and Explorer, maybe hit a non-land card so we get a 2-2 blocker. Problem is I also want an artifact in play to sack to the Anvil eventually. So I think the easiest solution is just to play Harvester. Turn to Voice of the Blast would be a little annoying since it survives the minus two minus two from Harvester, but we still have a glare in hand. So yeah, put on definitely a life gain deck with a case of the uneaten feast. So next up can attack with Harvester, play Siren, play Anvil. I'll hang on to Soaring City. And between map token and blood token, I think we still want the blood token for Harvester. So I'll sack the map. So we're happy to trade here if our opponent offers. Black likely for Amalia. And our opponent attacks. So... Yeah, I mean we could trade for both. Another case. And Phantom. So they did not solve the case yet, that's important. Found Satchel, that's nice. So Harvester keeps attacking. And then we can sack Blood Token to enable Satchel. Could also sack a clue, but 
clue tokens are going to be pretty useful later. So our two engines are online. Still have a bit of interaction in hand. So don't hate my spot. Just gonna prevent them from solving their case. Shieldreds, okay. Probably want to glare as opposed to Horawara. Another satchel. Okay, so if we want to have a very efficient turn, I just play both spells out. Which seems worthwhile. And then I can afford to sack a clue token. Okay, next turn we can start drawing. There's a Maliad, long last. Opponent will get to explore a bunch. So yeah, getting lots of value. Veteran, good to put in the graveyard to disturb. Opponent keeps it on top. Alright, step one, draw a card. Not the most exciting. So I'm likely gonna draw again. Could do it now in case I find like a gear drake I wanna play before sacking more stuff. Epicure I can cast. Sadly not enough to enable Harvester to take out Amalia. But uh, yeah, I guess we'll attack all out. And then I can sack a token to Anvil if they block it. If we were worried about sweepers, we could maybe enable Satchel in the opponent's turn. And then make Thopters, but not too concerned about board wipes in this matchup. So yeah, with the Veteran, they can likely solve the case. Is there a Paragon on top? Nope, opponent with one card left in hand. So again, start by drawing. And there's our Gear Drake. Can play it. Sack a clue. And then we'll still have Blood Token left as well. And Epicure can maybe deal the last point. So we'll send the team sideways. So right now it's 8 damage coming across, and then we would have 1 from Anvil, 1 from Epicure. So if our opponent takes the rest, I think we kill them, but uh, opponent blocks with Phantom now. So damage happens. Opponent still at 3. Play Epicure. And then can uh, use Satchel now. Okay. Probably activating Anvil in the opponent's end step. Or we can uh, just get there with combat damage. Paragon's fine. Opponent does gain a bit of life back here. Poisoner also has good synergy in this archetype. I guess maybe their plan is to get Amali up to 20 power to wipe the board. Should be able to close out the game before that happens. Uh, 
All right, so points at eight. I think I should activate Anvil for the extra damage. Opponent now has solved the case, so next turn they can start playing stuff out of the graveyard. And Synthesizer we can play. Finding a land. So I probably have enough mana where I can just sack Synthesizer for three mana. Although it's possible I need to sack the blood token to dig a little bit deeper. Haven't really done the math to see if we have lethal on board. Yeah, let's just uh, sack the blood token for now. Find a land. So can sack Synthesizer to Anvil or to itself. I guess at this point I'm going to be able to cast everything except another Satchel. And find another land. Okay, so send the team sideways once again. Opponent's got four blockers. And then we should have enough coming through. Yeah, ended up being kind of interesting. Give the opponent one more turn and I'm sure they can go off with Amalia. But a nice showcase of Anvil alongside Satchel. Damage happens. Guess we can sack Thopter. And there we go. Not too much damage to spare. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and we seem to have a keeper. Gonna take some damage off Shivan Reef to play Epicure. And then we've got artifacts to sacrifice to Voltage Surge. Hoping to draw Anvil, Gear Drake, Harvester would all be good. Put on to Red Green with Turn 1 Swiss Spear, so maybe the Pump Spell deck. And a Siren. So. Might be safer to just surge the Swiss Spear now before they can giant growth it in response. Since that could beat even 4 damage Voltage Surge. And then we'll just play Siren as well. Could of course try and punish a pump spell by taking out Swiss Spear in response. But it's a bit risky. Especially when they can have multiple instants. Otherwise we could maybe sit back, try and double block. This I'm happy to trade. Okay, play Epicure. And then we can maybe explore. I guess I'll start there. Okay, take one damage instead of playing Coast, so we don't have to deal with tapped lands. I wouldn't be able to enable the Satchel next turn yet. But that's okay. Opponents may be out of creatures. They might regret trading the Codebreaker. And then next turn by sacking either a blood token or a clue, we'll be able to make our first Thopter. Questing Druid end of turn, trying to hit more action. And yeah, they hit pretty nicely with Copperline Gorge Spell Spear. Another card that goes pretty well with a bunch of pump spells. So we need to dig for more removal basically. Probably fine to start with a clue.
find Anvil, nice. So I can play Anvil plus Epicure, or we can try and keep our life total a bit higher and maybe sack uh, Blood Token, discarding Sheevan Reef. Epicure does apply a bit more pressure to the opponent's life total as well, so it might still be worthwhile. And then just activate Anvil on a Blood Token to drain for one, make our token, and then Satchel can also activate. So we're starting to build up a bit of an army. Problem is Spell Spear tramples, so it's not like we can chum block it easily. And of turn play with fire. So our opponent means business. They might take a turn off to transform Spell Spear first. For now I'll take it. And the Picnic Ruiner is next, also quite scary when combined with Pump Spells. Okay, so probably start with a Clue Token once again. And then... Yeah, if we don't find answers, we can use the Blood Tokens next. And Gear Drake isn't bad, although doesn't really provide an answer right now. So if I play it... Can use a blood token, and then we're more likely to draw a voltage surge than our black removal spell, although there's only three surges left. So maybe it's still just play Sheevan Reef to sank the blood token. And find Satchel. Alrighty, so... Do we attack all out? Opponent can block one creature with a Picnic Ruiner. Take four. Next turn we could take lethal if we don't block with enough stuff. We do get to grow the Gear Drake a little bit more at least. Yeah, I think I might just attack here. And try and set up lethal for next turn. I'm glad they blocked an artifact token. Opponent changed their mind. Otherwise we could have sacked to Anvil, so... That's the correct play on their part. Damage happens. And then... Could use Satchel now, could use it in the opponent's turn. I'm probably gonna end up... Using Anvil for one life but can do so in their turn as well. So sure. And then the blood token can still give us an extra toughness on the gear drake if needed. But uh, yeah, opponent's gonna go all out here, starting with trample on the picnic runer. So there's no way we're soaking up enough damage. They've got four cards in hand, so I assume they've got at least a few giant growths so what's the best I can do? Use Blood Token to grow Gear Drake. Something along these lines. Opponent wants to let the first strike damage happen, that's fine. Third nine. And then before regular damage, sack to anvil. We'll keep all our creatures, and wow, opponent concedes. I guess they must not have had any pump spells left. Get to grow Gear Drake, eat the spell spear, and then attack back for lethal. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand is. Not perfect. The Sulphur Springs is going to cost us a lot of life. Double Epicure, double Surge. So the hand this wants to be good against is kind of an aggressive creature deck with double Surge. But um, I wouldn't be able to double spell early with our current mana. 
So I kind of see this working out poorly. Take a mulligan. This is missing black mana. Although if we get there, our hand's pretty solid. I'll try it. And then I can play turn two gear drake regardless. Synthesizer gives us another look at a land, and that's ideal. Still want to start with a gear drake, so we have something in play to sack to anvil. And no removal, surprising. Maybe they just have go for the throat. So, the longer we wait on Synthesizer, the better. And I would like to deploy Anvil here, if possible. So I think that's the play, just play Anvil. And I'll sank the clue to grow the Drake. And hit you for two. So yeah, it's possible the removal is just all go for the throats, which doesn't quite line up. Now I don't mind playing Synthesizer, even though if we exile a Satchel I wouldn't be able to play it yet. So I could wait one more turn and just play another Anvil. And then I think we attack first. Let damage happen. And then I'll sack the token. Okay, pass it back. Opponent with a Mind Splice Apparatus makes sense, so they're going big. Now, Soaring City can be a way of bouncing their artifacts, so that might be the play. So, for now we'll take our turn. Draw Harvester. So what's the best case scenario here? We play Synthesizer and Exile all land, so I can still Soaring City. And I guess we can also sack Synthesizer to Anvil to get two shots out of land. And that one enters tapped, so it's not ideal. And a glare doesn't do it. Okay, so we could get punished here by this apparatus now. But uh, I'll play my land out attack. And then... Can maybe hold back the harvester if we expect a sweeper next turn. Silver Scrutiny draw three. Yeah, that's pretty good. Opponent on taps. So they might have the Black March to gain life back, so as long as I keep Anvil available to sack creature in response, we can deny the life gain. So that's also a reason not to play Harvester. Or I guess we could Voltage Surge our own Harvester. But yeah, that's what I was afraid of, deadly cover-up to wipe the board. So can uh, sack a token in response. And our opponent's still pretty low, facing double anvil. So we still have a chance. Step one, synthesizer. Find another one. So, do want to enable anvil here. And I'm still interested in channeling Soaring City if possible. Find a Siren. Yeah, interesting spot. Can just play Synthesizer, hope for land once again. How bad is it if our opponent gets to keep Mind Splice Apparatus? I mean, if they draw a bunch of cards, we don't really care. Just don't want them gaining life or making some game-winning play. So it's a, a difficult one to judge. It would be nice to have another Synthesizer, so we can keep the Anvils fueled. Find a Voltage Surge. So I could still sack Synthesizer to Anvil, since we have Voltage Surge to kill our own creature, to deny potential life gain from March. 
Although I guess it doesn't work if I channel Soaring City. And once again, a tapped land. We do have a lot of them in the deck, to be fair. So I'll play Siren and keep up Voltage Surge, I guess. Our opponent is at three. Scrutiny for three. If that happens. Draw two. So they still haven't found what they're looking for. Another scrutiny for four this time. Only black mana untapped. So we don't have to worry about them countering our voltage surge. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Missing blue mana, but we've got double synthesizer to keep digging. Yeah, I'll try it. Don't want to play it on turn one, but can maybe go for a turn two in the hopes of hitting a blue land. Weaver, we're happy to voltage surge. Alright, there we go. So, can still play Synthesizer, since we have a second one. And that's ideal. And next turn we can Synthesize again. And maybe play an Offering as well. So how is the Enchantment matchup? It's gonna be close if they get a large trampler going and we don't have removal for it, so we could be in trouble. So for now, Synthesizer again. Maybe leaving blue mine available in case we exile a Gear Drake. So now if I want to play the land, I won't have Offering available, which I think is still more important. And then I'm probably going to trump and sacrifice. Another satchel and a harvester. So if I go double Harvester, our opponent would need a basic land before they can copy ossification with Weaver of Harmony, which would be the main concern. So I think that's worth it. Overplaying Satchel. Satchel's also better if we can immediately make our Thopter, which we can maybe do if we sack a map token or a blood token in the same turn. Of course, the best alongside Anvil, where we can enable it for free. So for now, just a companion. Opponent's digging for a third land. And now we've got double harvester online to try and trade for their creatures. This is an interesting attack. I guess we'll trade. If they have a pump spell, could be the a roll token. In which case, I may as well double block. Okay. And then can use Harvester to take out the Visitor as well if we'd like. And then now with a land, this one in particular would be nice to keep to bounce a creature back. But uh, I don't mind enabling the Satchel by sacking a, a Blood Token or Map Token. Yeah, my hand is pretty good. There's nothing I actively want to discard, so maybe we do just explore. Siren I don't need. I'm looking for removal. Yeah, I probably should have explored first in case I draw a non-Ottawara land. So we can activate this. And then for now, her opponent did draw a basic, so they could ossification me. So I think it's still safer to just take out the visitor. 
and pass. And then next turn we should be able to deploy a second satchel. And there's Calyx, that's the scary one, especially when paired with Audacity to give Trample. And another Siren. Okay, so if I offering, I would need to draw an untapped land in order to enable the satchels. So maybe I just want to explore with a map. And if we find land good, if we find a non-land, that's probably fine too. Synthesizer. Yeah, that seems like a good one to keep on top. And we'll try and play defense. Might take a bit of a hit here. But we've got a ton of card advantage lined up. Companion's fine. And Skralv luckily doesn't grant protection or hexproof from Colorless. So I'm very happy to trade. Step one, Synthesizer. Find another one. It's a bit overkill, but I guess while we're here, we may as well. Alright, cast Offering from Exile, and then I still probably sack a Synthesizer since I really want to find a land this turn if I can help it. Don't think I'll be playing Siren. And I might find a land and require blue-red. Alright, Voltage Surge can deal with Calyx. Makes me feel a lot safer. I want to do it now before they untap with Skrelv. And then we can use Satchel. And uh, I guess we'll play Siren as well. Still gonna play defense, not in a hurry to attack them. Next turn we can play Anvil, sack another Synthesizer to Offering. Okay, Weaver is now a little scarier when Ossification's a potential play and a Reign of Truth. So we'll just jump. Annihilating Glare has to deal with Skrelf first. But that's okay. Uh, step one. I guess Anvil into Offering. Hope to find a black source. It's gonna be a tapped one. And we can still play Drake. Yeah, I guess there's no point in glaring this turn. I do want to enable Anvil to get a token, so we'll do that now. And uh, what kind of token do we want to sacrifice? Probably a blood token at this point. Okay. Still gonna play defense. You never know when Audacity might show up and give Trample. And they could also double the trigger with Weaver of Harmony. A naturalist is fine. And another Calyx. Okay. So I'll chump once again. I should probably chump with my non-artifact creatures. Alright, so we can Glare Skrelv, sacking 
synthesizer. I'm growing the drake. Find a land. Still have five clue tokens we can sacrifice as well. So I don't think we have enough for lethal here. Should I sack a bunch of stuff growing the drake? We've got four thopters. Although we're getting kind of close to be fair. So I think for now maybe sack a clue. Find Epicure, play Epicure, play Harvester. Okay, maybe start sacking some map tokens. Another Anvil I should keep on top. then it should be safe enough to attack with a drake. And then next turn we should certainly present lethal, even if they gain some life back. So the plan is to block Naturalist and then sacrifice the blocker to our Anvil so they don't gain any life. All right, there's the Ossification, so that's going to get doubled by Weaver, exile two things. But our Drake got an attack in already, so that's fine. And they're probably going to get rid of Harvester as well. That all happens. Another Reign of Truth? Yeah, I mean, if it weren't for Anvil sacking my creature, we could be in trouble. If their last card gives Trample, that could be bad. Alright, just an attack. Block, sack to Anvil, which denies the life gain. And then we should have enough in the air. With double anvil, let's see, 5 plus 3 is 8. Uh, 9, 10. I guess we're one point short, but we might find another point of damage here. So, definitely playing anvil. If the map token finds a non-land card, that would do it. Find the land. And uh, maybe more mana efficient to use blood tokens as opposed to clue tokens. Gear Drake doesn't present lethal right now. So I guess I could keep digging or we can just wait another turn and go for it next turn. Yeah, that might be acceptable. Just send in Thopter. And that's it. Can pull off the same trick. Companion draws. They might double it. So you have the top deck Audacity, that's the one scary card here. Kami's fine. Alright, so we should be in the clear. Opponent goes all out.
And don't forget to use satchel. And we can draw with a clue. And that's enough for a concession. Awesome. A nice grindy game here against Green White Enchantments. Getting to see Double Satchel do its thing. So, yeah, all in all, this Grixis Artifact Sacrifice deck is pretty fun. Got some pretty significant additions in this uh, newest expansion. Now there are still a few weak points to the strategy. It takes a while to get our engines going, so even if we are technically ahead on board, the opponent still has ample time to top deck out of it. If our opponent's deck kind of goes over the top, thinking of the domain deck, they can usually still beat us if they chain together our Traxas and other expensive spells, so that matchup seems pretty tough. And then we also still have to run a few pain lands in order to make the mana work, so we can cast those early multicolored spells. So against aggro we might take a bit of damage ourselves and then it's not too difficult for a mono red deck to burn us out if we're low enough so yeah those matchups will still remain a problem so i don't think the deck is going to take over standard by any means but it is definitely a fun deck if you enjoy this play style so that's going to do it for today's gameplay want to thank you for watching hope you enjoyed and as always have a nice day